How to fix your man. That's what we're going to talk about today. In other videos, I've said repeatedly that you can't fix your man. And I meant that in the context of you have a man in your life and you're trying to get him to do better and you just fail and fail and fail. You can't fix your man that way. Today I'm going to teach you how you actually can fix your man though. And the reason you can fix your man is because your man is not something that's out there. Your man is actually something that's inside of yourself. And you're just not in the habit of letting that aspect of yourself live. And so you can't attract the man that's right into your life. And you can't attract the man that might be in your life to be the right guy in your life. We only can attract the right man in our lives. Or ladies, you can only attract the right man in your life if you live your life correctly. Otherwise you can't do it. And see the reason is, is because you're something special. As a woman you're something special with an amazing creative potential. And the right man for you is a man that matches that potential. It's not any other man. Okay? So if you're not accessing that potential, you only can attract the wrong one. Okay? It's really that simple. It seems hard, it seems like it's been an impossible journey because you've been going about it the wrong way. Alright? So today I'm going to talk about how to do it the right way in accordance with your chart, with your horoscope. Okay? So when we have our horoscopes, we have the picture of the sky, all the planets up there. And honestly, a lot of that horoscope is faded. Meaning, you're born into a certain country. If you were born into Afghanistan, Afghanistan at a certain time when the Russians were invading Afghanistan, you have some serious limitations you know, in your life. There's no changing that. There's no time machine and going back and being born somewhere else, right? So there's certain things that are, you're just faded in your life. One of them is the world you're born into, which means your country, your neighborhood, and for all of us, planet Earth. Okay? And we have to live under the limitations of that, all right? But that's really not such a big deal. A lot of people like to blame everything on the bigger picture. The government, the this, the that, the conspiracy, it's all bullshit. That limitation is not big enough to destroy your happiness, okay? Now, but that's a prevailing influence. That's the space you're born into, all right? Now, under that, you develop habits. And these habits are shown astrologically by a technique called the Lajitadi Avashtas, which in my opinion are the single most important part of Vedic astrology, of any astrology system at any time. Okay? These literally show the habits with which we use a planet. Are we in the habit of using a planet in the way that it works for us? Or are we in the habit of using a planet in a way that doesn't work for us? This is the second tier. This is how you move through the world that you're born in. Okay? Think about people born in circum the same circumstances as you and through the same world. And watch why their lives work and your doesn't. It's because how they're moving through that world. And what moves us through our world? Our habits. Are we in the habit of doing what promotes our life? Are we in the habit of doing what kills us slowly? Literally. Are we taking a carrot into our mouth or are we smoking a cigarette, right? One of them will kill us slowly. And if your Jupiter is causing you problems, when it comes to your Jupiter, you're simply in the habit of using it in a way that is not allowing you to live and through that, not allowing you to attract the right man into your life. It's a matter of habit. It's not faded at all. That's the beautiful thing. The second tier of our existence, after the world we're born into, which we cannot change, is our habits. The only thing we can change is our habits. Underneath our habits, there's three other considerations that a planet has. But they're all under the big consideration of how you habitually use the planet. If you have, if those three other considerations are in troubled shape, but you use them with better habits, they're going to work for you so much better. So we don't even have to care about those other three. They're petty compared to your habits. 
Your habits make your destiny, your habits make your life. And your habits are not even that hard to change. But if you're blind to your habits, if you don't see them, if you walk around like this and you don't even see your habits, you don't even know what habits you need to adopt to overcome the habits that aren't working for yourself, the bad habits. Okay? So literally what I'm going to teach you to do, I'm going to teach you to take the planet that represents your man, which is Jupiter, and I'm going to talk to you about the good and bad habits that Jupiter is being used. How you're moving through the world with Jupiter. Are you using it with good habits or bad habits? Okay? When you use it with good habit, your life starts to work. Okay? First, the importance of Jupiter. Such an important planet. It's an absolutely underrated planet. Yet the ironic thing is, only a fool would underrate it. Because the number one reason women come to an astrologer is because they're looking for a man that will work for them. Jupiter rules your husband. Okay? The number one reason men come to an astrologer is because they want more money. Jupiter rules wealth. Okay? So everything I'm going to talk about in this video, if you're a male, will apply to your money. And if you're a woman, it also applies to your money. But if you're a man, it really applies to your money. Okay? The concepts are the same. People come to astrologers for money and men. Okay? And husbands. Duh. Obviously, Jupiter is super, super important. The first thing I look at in charts lots of times is Jupiter now. It's so important, okay? Alright. If people are not in the habit of using their Jupiter to get the right man or the right amount of money, they're going to come to an astrologer wondering what's wrong. What's wrong is you need to quit smoking your Jupiter. Okay? You need to use your Jupiter with healthy habits that work. It's scientific. Certain things work, certain things don't work. And it's that way with every single planet. And that's why we have these Lajitadi Vashtas, which let us see, are you using your planet, in this case Jupiter, in a way that works, or a way that guarantees failure? Okay? Okay, so what is Jupiter? Super important. And astronomically, we can see it's super important. It has the most mass of any planet. It has so much mass that the Sun is not the center of our solar system. I know everyone told you everything revolves around the Sun. The Sun is the center of the solar system. It's not true. The Sun is sitting here in space and all the planets are moving around the Sun. And Because of Jupiter's huge gravitational pull on the Sun, the Sun actually, like here's the Sun right here. This is the Sun. The Sun is actually moving around a point in our solar system called the Berry Center. It takes about 12 years for the Sun to move around this point. Because Jupiter takes about 12 years to move around the center of the galaxy, so solar system. So it's really pulling the Sun's orbit around this little point. Jupiter is so important, it moves the Sun, the so-called center of our solar system. And it literally feels that way. When you get your Jupiter, you really feel like you can change the world. If you're a girl and you get a man that's right for you, you just feel like you can change the whole world. Or you get the other part of Jupiter, you get mass prosperity, you realize, wow, I can really change the world. These are the things that let us change the world. And even just on a simple level, the right man have a Jupiter baby and you actually raise that baby in a healthy environment, when does that happen? You can actually change the world. Okay? Jupiter can, is the planet we change the world with, it really is. So, in astrology, there's sort of two camps of planets, roughly speaking. There's the Sun, Mars, and Jupiter. These are all planets of fire. They're all rule a sign that's a fire sign. They're fiery planets. Fire is the life. All the fiery planets have to do with life. The Sun is the fire in the heavens. It's the life that God wants to live through you. It is the spark of God in you, the, the, the constancy of your soul, that spiritual presence within you. And it's in heaven. It's watching from afar. It's monitoring and witnessing your entire life. Okay? It's your true intelligence of spirit. Okay? That's the fire in the sky. It's called Surya. Okay? Then, that means we have a soul force. There's an aspect of our soul that wants to express and experience life on earth. Okay? And it does that to a great degree to, to grow. Okay, the sun wants us to grow. It's a tough planet. It really expects us to grow, and it's going to force us to grow. Okay? But it's a fire planet. And it's the source of all the other lights of all the planets. When you look out and you see Jupiter or Mars 
or Venus or any other planet. The only reason you see that planet is because it's reflecting sunlight. Those planets don't have light. They're not little light bulbs traveling around space. They're just reflecting the light of the sun. The sun is the soul of all. It's what's giving light to our entire solar system. And all the planets are reflecting the light of the sun from different places of the zodiac and therefore endowing us with different qualities. Okay? Then we have the fire on Earth, or in the Earth now, and that's Mars. Okay? That's the, the molten core that's in the center of the Earth that emerges as lava in Hawaii and through volcanoes and through other active volcanic places. It's, there is a point where this whole globe we live on was a molten mass of water, fire, that's the Aries part of Mars. Water, that's the Scorpio part of Mars. This molten mass of bubbling water, basically. All the minerals in this molten mass were in a liquid form. And then as it cooled, crystals started growing out of this coolant. And through that process, life eventually grew. Literally out of this molten mass. So, the evolution of life, life growing out of this molten mass on this planet, is all Mars. How does that impact our life? Well, we're a life. We're a life indicated by the sun, that fire in the sky, okay? That's our soul. And that life wants to live here. And there's things going against that we have to fight against. We have to fight against infections as babies. We have to fight against infections as adults. We have to fight sometimes for our right to survive as free people and have revolutions. And we have to fight for our right to be ourselves every day. Our mom says you can't be this, dad says you can't be this, and do we, are we going to fight it or not? That's Mars. Okay? It's the fight to survive as ourself. It's in a critical planet. Then we have Jupiter. Jupiter is the fire in the atmosphere. What does that mean? Well, I go to a, see a thunderstorm, and you see the thunderstorm, and lightning flashes. The, the fire is coming from the heaven to Earth. Okay, so Jupiter is literally the intermediary planet between the heavens, the sun, and the Earth, Mars. Jupiter is what are you gonna, telling you what are you going to fight for. Jupiter is the signal inside yourself that says this is you and this is your life. In fact, one of the names for Jupiter is Jiva, which means life. Jupiter is the messenger, literally the communicator that says this is you. Okay? Now what are you? You're a soul, which means you're a goodness. You're, you're just absolute goodness. That's what souls are. Okay? What is goodness? It's wisdom, it's joy, it's love. Okay? That's what we all are. But how many of us are walking around believing that or acting like that, right? That's what we all are. But we don't know it. How can we know it? The sun's way the heck up there, totally so far away, you know? But it's Jupiter, the fire in the atmosphere, that bends the electricity, the fire from the sky to Earth. And these sudden flashes, boom, that allows life to grow. What happens during a thunderstorm? You get nitrogen in the air and the crops grow like mad. Now we put nitrogen into chemicals and ruin the soil that's because we want to grow the crops in places that there's no lightning. You know, you need lightning to really grow crops. That's why in the Vedas, the ancient text from India, they're always praising Indra, the god of thunder, and Thor, the god of thunder. Why does Thor always win all the wars, you know? Because to these primitive cultures, they needed nitrogen and rich soil to grow their crops and thrive and live. Even if they were meat eaters, the meat, the meat they ate needed nitrogen and rich soil to grow good grass so that the, the, the herbivores could live and be healthy. So, this idea that the energy comes in a spark to grow life. That's Jupiter. And that's how it works within ourselves. We have a sparks that go off in us at times. They're like lightning. They're not like the sun where they're always there. Yes, our soul is always there witnessing everything. But when does our sun communicate with us? Boom, that's Jupiter, the flash. It does it for a flash. It's your good instinct. It's your instinct that says, yes, this is the good thing I want to do. All right? And so often, after we have a good instinct, we think, well, what if tomorrow this happens? I better not do that. I better not do the giving charitable thing. I better hold on. 
No, that's not Jupiter. Jupiter, you feel a good instinct, you do the good thing on a very basic level. Now, the best thing we can all do on this planet is be ourself. It's the absolute best thing we can do. The worst thing, the most evil, wrong thing we can do on this planet is not be ourself. And being ourself comes in sparks. We're getting inspiration. This is me. And we want to just thrive and live it. You know, this is inspiration to live. And you want to live it. Now, if when that inspiration to live as yourself comes, and you actually act on it, no matter what, you have the faith, the belief that acting on it is the only way to live, then you begin to live your life. The life that reflects the goodness and the beauty that your soul wants to express on earth. And only then can you attract the right man. See, a man is here to support a woman in being herself. And a woman is here to support a man in being himself. That's why we're here. Okay, to create the best out of those two possibilities. All right? But we're unique. You can't just take one man and one woman and glue them together and expect them to work. You have to live your life according to your right life. And then you attract the right man who can actually be the right partner for you. You can't do it otherwise. So you'll never find a partner by searching for one. You find a partner by living your life. You don't need a man. Jupiter is your man, but his one of his most common names in Sanskrit is Jiva, life. By living your life, you find the right man. You don't find the right man by looking for him. It'll never work. Okay? You only find him by living your life. So basically, when we look at your Jupiter, we're looking at, are you in the habit of living as you? Are you in the habit of following the inspiration that is your soul communicating to you, that this is you and this is how you need to live to thrive? Or are you not in the habit of that? If a Jupiter has any of these afflictions we're going to talk about, there's something getting in the way of that habit. Okay, of that good habit of following your inspirations. Now, whatever planet may be causing that, um, whatever planet may be harming your Jupiter, it's, it's happening because in your early environment, you weren't val your Jupiter wasn't validated. Meaning that you're, you're, when you did want to just live as yourself, you were shut out, abandoned, rejected, whatever, shamed. You know, there was a negativity put upon you where you just weren't allowed to get in the habit of living your life. You're literally, you have opposing forces that don't validate the process of you living as yourself, listening to your inspirations, following the joy of an inspiration. And so you never found out what life is right for you. You know, you never found out what to live for. Because see, we all have an energy of sun is telling us what to live for. And it communicates that with the inspiration of Jupiter, the lightning flash. Aha! This is what's to live for. But if we're not in the habit of following that lightning flash, if every time that lightning flash comes, we get, a sh we get shamed or rejected for it, then why would we believe that that's an inspiration, a lightning flash to ever pay attention to? We wouldn't, right? We wouldn't believe it, okay? So and that's what happens when you have a troubled Jupiter. So then instead of being able to live the life that's you, that will track the right guy into your life, there's a habit of not living the life that's you and thinking you, you need this or that from the outside. But it starts with the inside, okay? Which is good, because you can change the inside. It's just a matter of habit, okay? All right. So, Sun, Moon, and Mars. If they're aspecting or conjunct Jupiter, or if... Um, or if Jupiter is in their signs, which is Leo, Cancer, Mars, uh, sorry, Aries or Scorpio, those planets will help your Jupiter. 
Okay, they're going to make your Jupiter do a better job. Okay, I'm not going to get into those planets. Okay, but if you see those planets involved, realize your Jupiter is getting help on some level. Okay, but I don't think I'll have time to cover that because that would be another 40 minutes or something. Okay, then you have to get your right chart. You need to go to vaultoftheheavens.com and get, get your chart calculated there. Okay? Um, don't get it calculated somewhere else. I'll also put a link to that chart calculator. Alright? Then you need to learn how to read the aspects. When you see your chart, there'll be a square that has the planets along the top. Sun, Moon, Mars, Mercury, Jupiter, Venus, and Saturn. And the planets along the side, Sun, Moon, Mars, Mercury, Jupiter, Venus, and Saturn. Okay? The ones on the top are the ones getting aspected. The ones on the sides are aspecting. And so if you'll go to Jupiter, you'll go Sun, and maybe there'll be a number like 20. That means the Sun's getting aspected by 20 points. Then you'll say, see Moon, and maybe it's blank. And then Mars, maybe it's blank. And then Mercury will maybe say 35. That means it's getting aspected to 35 points. So, the, this way is the Jupiter, the aspects it's getting from the planets on this side, okay? That's how you need to read that table. The aspects are from 0 to 60 points, all right? The higher the aspect, the more impactful the planet is, okay? When we talk about these troubling influences, basically the more of a bad habit influence Jupiter is under, got it, okay? So you need to look at those aspects. They're between 0 and 60 points. Vedic aspects are calculated in points. All right? You don't just look and say it's on or off. It's a matter of points. What's a lot of points? Well, anything more than 30 is more than half. So it starts getting a lot. Anything more than 40 points out of 60 is a whole lot. But what the important thing you need to do is to look at the strongest influences. The strongest influence is going to be the most active, okay? So, that's how you look at the aspects. Then, an aspect is worth 60 points at most, okay? Then you need to look at the chart and see if a planet's conjunct Jupiter. If it's conjunct Jupiter, that's a full influence. It doesn't matter how far apart Jupiter is from that planet. If Jupiter's in the same sign as another planet, it's conjunct, and it's a full influence which you can say is as strong as a 60-point aspect. It's 100% of an influence, okay? And then, if Jupiter is in a sign of a planet, say it's in Gemini ruled by Mercury, then it's going to have a full 100% influence from Mercury, which is equal to a 60-point aspect, okay? Alright, so that's how you want to examine the chart. Look for the sign Jupiter's in, look for the planets it's conjunct, and look for the aspects of planets. Okay? The strongest influences are the sign and conjunction. The aspect is usually a lesser influence unless it's 60. If it's 60, it's the same strong as the conjunction or being in the sign. Got it? Okay. So, if you've got... Oh, let me mention one other thing before I get into this. So, what happens is, as I mentioned, Jupiter's job is to help us live the life that's our life, which is being good. You can only be good living your life. Okay? And we find that life by following our inspirations. The lightning flashes which come, boom, and then don't come back. You've got to follow it when it comes. Okay? Following that inspiration of what we know is right for us. And that makes us the best version of ourself we can be. It makes us the most fulfilled version of ourself we can be, and it makes us the most animated and alive version of ourself that we can be. Which means it makes us the most attractive version of ourself we can be. But if we don't do that, we're not going to feel like attractive people. Okay? Jupiter is a super important planet for attraction because it has the most mass. It's the heaviest planet outside the sun, and attraction is based on mass. Okay? So, if Jupiter is thriving, you'll attract good things into your life, because you're living the life that's really you. You're living instead of pretending to live somehow.
okay? So, or scared to live somehow. So when, um, if you're not doing that though, and this is the point I wanted to make, if you're not using your Jupiter, if your Jupiter has some of these afflictions to a big scale that I'm going to talk about, you won't feel like being yourself is going to get you anything. Why wouldn't you feel that way? Because when you were yourself as a child, it didn't get you anything from your parents. It didn't get you validated. It didn't get you appreciated. It didn't get you seen. It didn't get you hugged. You know, it didn't work. Your parents had some issues going on that they couldn't appreciate your spirit. Just that simple. They couldn't appreciate your spirit. Or whoever it was that was your primary authority in your life, the person you looked up the most, the most important person, that their judgment, their opinions meant the world, that that person just couldn't see your spirit. And so when you lived out of your spirit, you just got shit back. You didn't get back the love and acceptance and appreciation for you, who you are. Okay? And so being yourself didn't work. And since it didn't work, why would you be in the habit of doing it as an adult, right? Why, why would we try to do something as an adult that failed us over and over and over again as a child, right? We wouldn't do it. And therefore, we develop a bad habit, okay? See, when we were children and we tried to live as ourselves, oftentimes what would happen, we would get in trouble for that, okay? Or who knows what, rejected, scolded, something for that. And so we stop, we go, okay, I need to stop doing this because this just gets, this is not good. This doesn't, I can't survive in this family, in this little world I'm in, if I'm doing that with that kind of resistance against me. So I'll just shut it down. Okay? Yes, yeah, so you needed to shut it down. But the minute you weren't in that situation, you don't need to shut it down anymore. I like to relate it to World War II. In World War II, everyone started smoking. Why? Because, you know, they're out there in the cold, freezing, you know, anything warm, cigarettes, a little bit of warmth, a little bit of warm air in their freezing lungs, right? They need to stay up all night. They're stressed and fearful. Nicotine soothes you, settles you down with stress. So in that World War II environment, smoking was actually a good idea. Smoking could keep you awake during guard duty, and, and so you would wake up alive, or you'd be alive in the morning instead of waking up dead, right? So smoking was a really good thing to do in World War II, actually. It saved a lot of lives, okay? And just to chill you out so you don't get, you're not suffering from stress for four years, you know, just give me a cigarette. Yes, smoking was a good thing in World War II. But the minute the world war ended, smoking was, became a bad habit. And, but they got in the habit of smoking because they needed to. And then, now, 20 years later, 1960s and 1970s, 30 years later, they're dying of lung cancer because they got this habit of smoking. They should have just quit smoking the minute the war ended. Okay? Same with us. The minute we got out of that world that we couldn't understand as children and became adults, now we can drop the habit anytime we want. And we can drop the habit of Jupiter, the bad habits of Jupiter, we can get in touch with those habits and drop them earlier than any planet, because Jupiter matures at 16, which means from 16 onward, we've got the biological wisdom to use our Jupiters better. The other planets, we have to wait a long time to use better, but Jupiter is the first one we can use better, okay? All right, so what happens is if we can't attract, you know, the validation, the love, the acceptance based on the goodness in us, the, the part of us that's really us, then we grow up thinking there's nothing that won't work. And instead, we have to find something that works. If that's not working, what am I going to find? Well, when Jupiter fails us in the world, we turn to Venus. Because both these planets are huge influences in our life that can make our life work. But they need to be used correctly. Venus, how Venus makes your life work is totally different than how Jupiter makes your life work. But if your life is not coming together and working and giving you the happiness that you know you deserve, then what we do is we go, well, I guess I'll use Venus. Venus, but then because we're using Venus to do something to make up for Jupiter, Venus can't make up for Jupiter, but we just try. But since we're using Venus, 
it's going to fail. We're going to use it in a way that won't help Jupiter. Because Venus can't help Jupiter. Venus can make her life better through Venus ways, but not make her life better in a Jupiter way. The only way to make your life better in a Jupiter way, which means to get the right man in your life, is by getting the bad habits off your Jupiter. But you don't know that until today. So what you've been doing is, you've been going to Venus and say, alright Venus, bail me out here. And there's two ways Venus will try to bail out Jupiter. It depends on your confidence in your curves. Okay? If you're not very confident in your curves, and you don't feel like a super attractive, sexy woman, then what you'll do, you'll use Venus as the nurse and the waitress. Because Venus is the nurse and the waitress, which means you'll do everything for your man. You'll wait for him, wait beyond his beck and call, do whatever he asked, be his perfect little waiter, waitress, and you'll nurse him, you'll rub his back when he hurts, you know, you'll take good care of him, you'll feed him great food as the waitress, you know, you'll just do everything for that guy. And he's not going to be in love with you as much as that woman and that woman and that woman. Why? Because he can only want you to the degree that you're being yourself, not to the degree that you serve him as nurse and waitress. And so you're going to burn yourself out giving, giving, giving to a guy. That's one option that Venus does. The other option is if you're confident in your curves and you have a history of men whistling at you across the street, you might just go, well, Venus is also the sexy babe. And you can use the sexy babe aspect of Venus, which means you'll try to attract men into your life using your curves because you're attractive and you feel confident enough in your attractability on a physical level that you'll try to attract men into your life. And you will. You'll attract a lot of men in your life. On, on the first date, they're going to try to pinch your ass. On the first date, they're going to try to sleep with you. You know, they're going to be there because of how you're advertising. You're not advertising as your full self. You're advertising with your curves. And so either way, you're not going to get the right guy. You can't use Venus to fix your Jupiter. You, in fact, Venus is the number one enemy of Jupiter. So, the more you use your Venus, the more bad your Jupiter is going to perform. And the less the guy is going to want to be the right guy for you. Okay? In the end. Alright? So, you're not a servant, you're not a waitress, and you're not a, a whore. Okay? I'm just going to be really brutal here. Okay? You're none of those things. You're a creature of amazing creative potential to have, create joy and love in your space. Okay? And then yes, you can feed someone a good meal, and yes, you can be totally sexy for someone. But those things are never going to be the working foundation of a relationship. Okay? Only Jupiter will be. Alright, Jupiter. First thing you look for. Is Jupiter in the same sign as Venus? Is Jupiter um, in the signs of Venus, which is Taurus or Libra? Or is Jupiter getting a strong aspect from Venus? In that case, Venus is hurting your Jupiter. Okay? And it's basically, Venus is an outside planet, basically. Okay? Venus and Mercury are both outside planets, which means we use those to make the outside world better. Because yes, we need to make that work with the outside world. And we do that through Venus and Mercury, okay, as the primary. But Jupiter is not an outside planet. He's a fire planet. Fire planets are internal planets. They come from inside out. So your Jupiter is a spark of your soul wanting to shine on Earth. Boom, show me. It is what Jupiter says. Okay, show me what's beautiful in you, is what Jupiter says when it sparks. Show the myself, show the world. But when Venus is aspecting or conjunct, or Jupiter's in the signs of Venus, Venus is telling Jupiter, the good things are the outside things. Okay, you need more of the outside things to make your life happy. The habit is, go look on the outside. Listen to the outside, okay? And yes, the outside is also the outside of the body, the curves, okay? Those are the important things. And if you have nice curves, you'll feel happy that you have nice curves. If you don't have nice curves, you'll be mad at everyone else who has nice curves, because you'll feel 
what's wrong with you is that you don't have nice curves. It's not. The reason your love life's not working is because you're not living from the inside out. Looking for outside things to bring goodness into your life. The man will make my life beautiful and worth living and fulfilling. The this will make my life worth fulfilling. The this and the that, all these things that are, exist that are not me, will make my life beautiful. No, they won't. They'll add to the beauty of your life. But the beauty of your life comes from living as yourself. So when Venus is influencing Jupiter, the search is for something externally valuable and worthwhile to create joy and a reason to live. Sorry, there's not a man out there that's worth living for. Okay? The only thing that's worth living for is what comes out of yourself. And that's Jupiter. And one of those things is a baby. So maybe you've been a single mom and you had a baby. And that was actually something worth living for. But remember that baby came from outside, inside yourself. Okay? And yeah, a man had a five minute role, but that baby came from inside of you out. And there's so many other things that are waiting to come out of you to make the world a more beautiful place. Okay? You have to look for what, the good that wants to come from the outside. Not the good that, that wants to come from the inside into the world out of you. But Venus, when it's influencing Jupiter, is in the habit of thinking, I need this good thing in my life. I need a man and then my life will work. You don't need a man for your life to work. You need your life to work because you're living as yourself with your full potential of creativity. Meaning you can go and make the world more beautiful through your presence. Do you have to save the world? No. You have to follow your inspirations which puts you into the place of your happiness. And then when you're in that happy state, the world gets more light. It's that simple. Okay? And when you're in that happy state where you have a life of your own that's happy. See, your life comes from inside yourself. But when Venus influences Jupiter, Venus is making Jupiter leave. Your life is out there. Your life is somebody or something out there. It's not. Your life is something inside yourself that wants to escape you and escapes during those lightning bolts. That's when it's trying to get out and shine. You have to follow that inspiration and start living your life. You need your life. Jiva is life. Jupiter is Jiva. It's life. You need your life to come from where it is, from yourself. And then when you're living your life, the life that's right for you based on the things that make you happy, then you attract the right guy. Okay? But if you're looking for the right guy to live your life, saying, oh, this thing will give, is my life, an outside thing, having this outside thing, then I can start living, then you can go on the rest of your life and never live. Life is something that comes from inside out, just like having a baby. Okay? You don't just go, you know, baby doesn't come from the stork, right? Stork doesn't bring the baby. The baby comes from inside out, as do all parts of life. And for a man too, it's the same. The life, living, is something unique to us. We have a life. We all have a life. But are we in the habit of living that life or not? We're not in the habit of living that life if Venus is influencing Jupiter this way. Instead, we're in the habit of thinking, there's something out there that when I have it, I'll have a life. No. You have a life the minute you started breathing. One of the names of Jupiter is Mantrika, which is the ingoing and outgoing of the breath. It literally is the whole process of your life. You started having a life the minute you were breathing. But if that life wasn't validated, if it was scolded, if you were rejected for it, if you were, if you were ridiculed for it, whatever, then why would you want to live it? You wouldn't, and you couldn't when you were a kid. But now you're an adult, you can and you need to get in the habit of living your life. Live for yourself. Live the life that makes you joyful. And then watch how it works. Don't wait for a man to come to make your life. The most, to me, the most funny thing in a sick way that I encounter in my practice is how many women come to me who are waiting for their life, waiting for a man before their lives get started. I'm looking at them with all their potential and I'm like going, what? Why are you waiting for this man to start your life? 
You just go live your life. But this is an epidemic of our culture. You need to live your life to get the right man. But the goal is living your life. If you truly, if you really live your life fully, 100%, you won't even need a man. But if you have one, it could still be great. Okay? All right. So, Venus influencing Jupiter. You're not in the habit of living your life. You're waiting for something external to come before you can live your life. So, get in the habit and realize, yes, when you get a spark, don't wait for a man. Don't try to seduce and attract a man. If you get a spark, follow it. That's what's going to attract the man. Seriously. Yeah, all of us men, we love seeing a sexy girl. Sexy women are wonderful to glance at. Okay? It's like eye candy. You know, it's like, it's kind of like going on a hike when there's wildflower season. You see all these flowers. It's nice to see beautiful things. And it's fun to see sexy things. But, those are, that's not worth marrying. It never works to marry that. Okay? In the end, a real man, the kind of man who actually take care of you in a responsible, partnership-centered way, and by to take care, I don't mean like you're a baby, but in a co-creative, partnership-centered way, that's a man who's living his life, and he wants to build his life. And he doesn't want a woman who's not doing that, because that'll be drudgery to him. He wants to continue building and living his life. And only a man who's building and living his life can be a good man for any woman. Okay? But if so if you're not living your life, how do you expect to get that kind of man? Instead you're going to get loser men who just want sex. Loser men who abandon you when you get pregnant, you know? Loser men who don't even know what they're doing here except they got an itch in their pants. Okay? Or loser men who think they want one thing but are confused and really don't even know but which way's up. Okay? Building and living our lives. That's what we want to do in partnership and alone. But it starts with alone. Okay? Alright, so that's the basics of what happens when Venus is hurting Jupiter. Okay? Now, let's say we got Jupiter with Mercury, aspected by Mercury, or in Gemini or Virgo, the signs of Mercury. Okay, well Mercury is an outside planet too, and he's supposed to be. See, there's so many things out there, isn't there? Just a world full of things. Well, what Mercury does, Mercury goes to something and says, let me check this out. Okay, that's interesting. I'll try that. Okay, it's not right. I, it's not right, but I learned something. I'm going to move on to this thing. All right, let me check that out. Mercury's the investigator. He keeps investigating things, checking things out until he finds the right one. So, if you're in a jungle, and you just got, say you landed on a deserted island, and you knew nothing about plants, and there's all these plants, and you had to figure out what you would eat. What you would do is you'd find a fruit, take a little tiny piece of it, see what it tasted like. If it tasted bad, you'd spit it out. If it tasted good, you'd swallow this tiniest little piece, wait half a day, and see if you got sick. If not, you would try a little more. You would just try that external thing that you need. Because see, there are things on the outside that you need to try. There's a lot of things on the outside that you really, really need to try, okay? And if they're not right, you just move on and try something else. But your life, Jupiter, the life that is you, is not something you go try. It's not found on a trial basis. That life is in you. It knows what it's here for. But you can't hear it. And not hearing it, not being in the habit of listening to it. I mean, you might even hear it, but you're in the habit of not listening to it. Instead, you'll be in the habit of trying this and trying this and trying this. And the same with men. Try this guy, try this guy, try this guy. You know, I'll just try this for a while. You know? No, that's not how it works. How it works is, there's a life inside of you that is inspiring you. And you have to act on that inspiration. It has nothing to do with the outside. The outside is absolutely meaningless to the life inside of you. Because see, this life inside of you, I like to relate it to a baby. Okay? Because of your unique DNA, you're going to create a unique baby. You know, you can't just go into the world and find a baby with your DNA pattern, right? Okay, you can't. Same thing, what you're, here to have, what you're here to have joy with, 
is unique to your makeup. What's going to bring you joy? What's going to make you feel alive? What's going to make you feel like you have a life worth living? is unique to your DNA, to your horoscope, to you. Okay? And it's not a try this and try that. It's just this is what makes me happy. And it doesn't have to be the thing that makes your money. And it doesn't have to be the thing that, you know, like I said, pays your bills. It doesn't have to be your job. It has to be what you're living for. There's an expression of yourself that we're all here to live for. That when we do it, our aches and pains fade away. Like me, I love talking to you all. I can be sick, half dead, feeling terrible. And the minute I get in front of this little camera, I feel great. You know, it doesn't matter how messed up I am. I feel great. I have a great time. Because I live for this. I live to share and talk with you all. Okay? And if I'm sick, the minute I stop, I'm going to be drained in half an hour and go to sleep. But as long as I'm doing this, I'm alive. Find out what makes you alive. For some people, what makes you most alive, you get to do for money. But everyone has something that makes you most alive. That is you expressing yourself into this world as an artist, basically. You know, as a creator of light on some level. Okay? It's fire, remember? It's lightning that lights your, the world up. It's fire and it nourishes the world. All right, you need to find that life. And that's something that only your inner self knows. It's not something you can just go look for, okay? You have to follow the inspiration. But when Jupiter is influenced by Mercury, instead of following that inspiration, there'll be the tendency to go, again, I have to find something on the outside and try it until I find something that exists. That's it. No. You have to start with yourself, okay? It starts with yourself, with your life. Find your life, ladies, if you want a better man is the message here, okay? Now, um, when Jupiter influences Venus through one of these ways, you're bound to have a lot of drama in life, okay? When Mercury influences Jupiter in these ways, you're bound to have a lot of um, more interesting experiences in life. But neither of those are supporting the life that's really you. Neither of these those are letting you feel alive. And when we feel alive, we're bright and shiny and attractive people. Okay? If you're feeling dead because you're not living your Jupiter, then you won't be an attractive person. Right? Because people don't want dead people. They want alive people. Which means they want people who are using their Jupiters. Okay? Live your life, and you'll shine and attract what you need. Okay. The most common thing you're going to see is Jupiter influenced by Venus in these ways, or Mercury influencing Venus. Stop looking on the outside for your life. It's not out there. It's trying to get it out from inside you. Follow that inspiration. Get in the habit of listening to that, no matter what. Okay? The other possibility is Jupiter in the same sign with Saturn. It has to be Jupiter and Saturn in the same sign. Otherwise, Saturn does not bother Jupiter at all. If they're in the same sign, then we have an issue. Now, this is a really unique issue, though, okay? Because there's a rule in astrology that Saturn hurts any planet it's sharing a sign with. So Saturn's going to hurt Jupiter now. But we also have another rule that Jupiter helps any planet it's with. So Jupiter is going to help Saturn while Saturn's hurting Jupiter. Wow, what a deal, right? Saturn is your disease resistance. It's your ability to go through hell and back and come back a healthier person than when you left the journey. Saturn is the most important planet for getting through this world and growing. Because we're all born here for only one reason. It's because we're sick. That's why we were born on Earth. Every person who was born on Earth got through down because you're one sick bastard. Go down there and get better. This is the hospital. Of, from, uh, this is the hospital. Okay? This is the world where we can get better. We're sick mentally, and therefore we become sick emotionally, and therefore we eventually become sick physically. Okay? And we're here to heal that sickness. Saturn shows our capacity to heal our disease. Okay? 
our mental egocentric diseases, our emotional longing diseases, and our physical liabilities. So, when you have a Jupiter-Saturn conjunction, your soul said, I'm going to make my primary task healing this lifetime. So, I'm going to put Jupiter with Saturn, and now Saturn is going to have a way better chance to heal. I'll go through crazy things that break me, and hurt me, and destroy me, and I will heal out of that. I'll be in the most ego wounded, most emotionally wounded, and even severely physically wounded places. And I will heal through all those. My capacity to heal, no matter what bad karma comes my way, I can do it. So you you're have the capacity to heal, which means to overcome all pains in life. See, all the pains that you get from any planet causing you grief, if you can heal through all that, then none of it matters. The first chart planet I examine in a horoscope is Saturn. I want to see what's their disease resistance on an emotional, physical, and mental level. If they have poor disease resistance on a mental level, I know the egocentric games of life are going to break that person. Okay? That's going to be their challenge. So, or the emotional losses, if they have a weakness in their emotional body to heal. I know their emotional losses are what's going to break them, and so on. Okay? Because in the end, when we heal, when we're healthy in mind, emotion, not even body, but if we're healthy in mind and emotion, nothing else matters. You know, if we're healthy in mind and emotion, we can be alone and have nothing and be okay. Okay? Because the pain that comes from being alone is simply a disease in our emotional body. You know? Okay, but I can't diversify into that too much. So, what you, when you have a Jupiter-Saturn, you have a capacity to heal. All the pain, all the trauma, all the stuff that's beating you up, you can heal that better than the average person. And these people are, I love Jupiter-Saturn conjunction people. Wow. They always blow me away how quickly they'll respond to any wisdom or any real healing. It's like, wow. You get another person, you're like slaving away forever trying to help them heal. Another person, you say one sentence and they're shining and flying. You're like, whoa, how did you just do that? It's a beautiful thing to see a Jupiter-Saturn in action. Okay? All right. So you've gotten the, and you've traded the capacity for healing. For, but your Jupiter is stuck now. Okay, your Jupiter is like, wait a minute, I don't know how to live my life. I'm not living my life. I'm struggling to live my life. I don't feel like my life's been validated. It's just like the other planets. You've had an environment where the life that wants to escape out of you, your life, the only life that can make you happy, is not validated, not supported, so you don't believe in it anymore, just like any of the other difficult Jupiter things. But instead, you have the capacity to heal. So what that means is, how much you can live your life, and therefore how healthy and good of a man you will attract, how right of a man you will attract, is based on how much you heal. Your life basically becomes about your healing process. As you heal, you'll live your life and attract your man more. So you need to focus on the healing. Saturn's a delaying influence. As Saturn gets healthier, the things it's impacting through conjunctions get better. Okay? In fact, we have, even have a rule in astrology that you have Jupiter and Saturn together. The dasha or period of Jupiter will be mediocre. And the dasha of Saturn will be great. Because in the dasha of Saturn is when you heal, and that's when the right man comes and the wealth comes and all the good Jupiter things come. They don't come in Jupiter dasha. Because in Jupiter dasha, he's working to heal your Saturn. Okay? Healing our Saturn is the ult of ultimate importance here. Okay? It's, it's so important. When we're, our Saturn's healed, we don't have to come back to planet Earth with all these things wrong with it. Okay? All right. So... You've traded in the capacity to heal for the right man for a while. So you want the right man with Jupiter, Saturn? Just keep healing. Just keep focusing on your healing. Overcome your wounds. Things like that. Okay? Um, 
as you heal, your life will you'll naturally embrace and follow the life that's you. Okay? All right. And as you naturally embrace and follow the life that's you, you'll attract more of the right man into your life. Okay? The right man is such a tricky word. The right man is the man that you can co-create with. Meaning you have a life, he has a life. And your lives naturally come together because of what you're each doing in your own lives. So it's not like, oh, I was with you last weekend, so this weekend you have to do what I want. It's family time. It's none of that bullshit. It's you're living your life, he's living his life, and so you just naturally come together. There's no way you can't come together because you're living your lives. That's a real relationship. Okay, That's a relationship that you thrive with. No, no compromise, but just truly relating your lives with each other because they work together and they draw each other to each other. That's the right man. Anytime you have a, you're not finding that. Okay, he lives in another country. He's not single. He's got to finish this first. Anytime there's any barrier, or he's he's just a loser, you know. Anytime there's something wrong in that picture, it's because on some level you're not using your Jupiter at full throttle. There's one of these afflictions going to it. So find out which the primary affliction is and work it out. And then the magnetism will change within yourself that those boundaries disappear or you attract someone who actually does work 100%. Because when you're, up, when you're living your life at full throttle, let your Jupiter unfold at full throttle, then you will live a life that will attract someone because your life will work with someone else's life. We're designed to create our life with something on Earth. See, the lightning Jupiter is the fire in the atmosphere. It bridges the fire in the heaven, which is your life, with the Earth, which is the life out there. So to have a baby, yes, it comes out of you, but not until you get a man inside of you, right? You need a man to have a baby. There's something out there that your Jupiter wants to connect you with. So, when you live your life, yes, there's a person out there for you to live your life with. Okay? And then you'll live the most full life. That's why Jupiter is your husband. It's the person you'll live your, full, your life the most fullest with. But you can't get that person unless you're living your life alone. You have to live your life to full capacity and then you attract the man you can live at a higher capacity with. Okay? All right. A um, long time ago, there was a book in the 80s. It was very popular. It was called Women Who Love Too Much. And basically, it was about all these women who basically thought they needed to have a man to live. They're basically looking for a man before they, they can start their life. And their whole lives were about their man. Look, poor girls. No, not the way to do it. And they found out that when these people started living their own lives and finding their own fulfillment based on who they were, that's when they became happy. That's when they started having working relationships. And this is, book was basically Jupiter. You know, this book was basically, these women had bad Jupiters and had to change the habit, and they did it. They changed the habit of waiting for life for them to come in the shape of a man. Instead, they decided to live their lives. Men do the same. Men are in the bad habit of waiting for money to come before they can live their lives. It's like, why do you need money to live? You don't need money to do anything. You just need to fucking do it. Okay? Sorry, I get really pissed at that because I just see this so much. Okay? You don't need money to live your life if you're male. And you don't need a man to live your life if you're a female. You were born with everything you need to live your life. You just need to start doing it following that inspiration to be the good thing that you are. Okay? And then, when you're living that, yes, you'll attract from the outside the right person. The heaven will meet the earth, the inside will meet the outside. And you will get a person that you can co-create with and have a more enriched life. Okay? Alright. So that's Jupiter with Saturn. You're going to be delayed with getting the right life and the right man until you heal. 
As you heal, you'll embrace the right life to then attract the right man. Okay? Those are the main things you're going to see. Um, and you always have to measure those against, is Sun, Moon, Mars healthy? Meaning, are Sun, Moon, or Mars conjunct Jupiter? Or is Jupiter in the sign of those, which is Leo, Cancer, Aries, or Scorpio? Or is, um, are they, is Jupiter getting any aspects from those three planets? That'll help. That, those are the good habits that you already have going for you. If you listen to the older video, Jupiter is your man video, I talk about the good influences as well. So you can skip to that video at some point and check out those good influences. You don't even know what they, you don't need to know what they are. Your, your good habits, you're already doing them. Okay? I didn't explain them as habits in that video, but you're doing those good things. So look at the numbers and realize, all right, I got a plus, a plus, a plus. So you've got some help, some things you're naturally doing, okay? We just want to tackle the bad habits, you know? We don't care about your good habits. We're just here to cure you of alcoholism and chain smoking, okay? And yes, we believe you have some good things going for you, but we're not interested in those. We're just here to deal with your bad habits, okay? All right, then you can get some other things. If you get Jupiter in the fifth sign from the Ascendant, and it's with the Sun, Saturn, or Mars, then you've also got a small Jupiter issue. You've also got a Jupiter issue. Okay? And the issue is of one of shame. You can feel ashamed about what you are and the life that you want to live. And you may actually, you would have had experiences of when you tried to be yourself that you were shamed for. The parts of yourself that wanted to jump out, you were shamed for it somehow, or caused shame. And the shame can happen because of social shame, meaning, oh, that's not the right thing to do in this world, or in this culture. Or it could just be shame based on the opinion of somebody else. But either way, it's from an outer authority that's larger than you. Okay? So, that means you're in the habit of believing the outer authority and the dictates it has on your life more so than what your life wants to do. No, when it comes to Jupiter, the only belief you need is in yourself and what wants to come out of you. That inspiration. Being yourself is what's good. No one can be good if they're not themselves. You know, it doesn't matter what you do, if you do it as not yourself, you're not a good person. In the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, you have to follow your Swadharma, which means your own nature. Following the nature of someone else, doing the deeds of someone else, even if good, do not serve you well, is the idea. Okay? Well, Jupiter is one of the plants that lets you live as yourself. It's not the only one, but it's a hugely important one. Okay? All right, Sun and Mars also do. All the fiery planets are about living as yourself in different ways, but the way of following your inspirations to let the goodness flow out of your life that attracts the goodness into your life of prosperity and the right man is Jupiter. Okay? Alright, so if you've been shamed because it's not understood, it's not appreciated what you do and you've been you somehow humiliated for that, then why would you feel like you could do it? Okay? So you need to get in the habit of making your authority not the other, the, the outside, but the authority is the life that wants to come out of you. If the life that comes out of you, even if the whole world laughs at it, doesn't mean it's the wrong life. Like Van Gogh. He's a great example of someone who sold one painting in his whole life as an artist of nine years, I believe, of active painting. Who painted hundreds of paintings. I mean, he painted more paintings a year than most painters did all of which are worth a fortune now, right? Wow. You know, live the life that's you, even if the whole world laughs. If you have sh a shame combination, Jupiter, in the fifth sign from the Ascendant, with the Sun, Saturn, or Mars, no, you let the life that wants to come, get in the habit of the life that wants to come out of you is the authority, not what people say. Don't let them be the authority, whoever they are, okay? Only your life is the authority of the life you need to live. Nothing else. Okay? Alright. The other possibility is if you get Jupiter with a node. 
So with the north or south node, Rahu or Ketu. So it's with the node and it's with the Sun, Saturn, or Mars. Then Jupiter will also be ashamed. Okay? So you just won't feel good enough to live your life sometimes. Because you were reduced, you were shamed when you tried to live your life. Living your life didn't get you honor because you were on the wrong people, born into the wrong culture, whatever. Because you were born to get out of this habit of caring about what outer authorities say when it comes to your life. You need to grasp, you know, regain your power of you are the only authority of truth to how you live your life. If it fills you with energy, if it fills you with happiness, if you thrive with it, that's the authority, nothing else. Okay? So essentially, all these difficult combinations are simply things that are keeping you from living your life in a way. Your relationship works when you live your life. It won't work until then. You know? I find women, that they make their turning points in life when it comes to their relationships, when they start living the things that bring them joy. Okay? And um, it's, it's that simple. I could have just said that in five minutes, but I had to waste an hour of our lives explaining it astrologically, right? Because you wouldn't have believed it if I just said one sentence probably. But can you get this now? Does this make sense? Remove the habits that are keeping you from living fully, as yourself. You move the bad habits that are preventing you from expressing the beauty that you're here to express. Even if no one recognizes it for 200 years, okay? Take joy in that expression, okay? Um, that's really where our joy comes from. And only when we have that joy, and the degree we have that joy, is the degree you can attract a man to share that joy with. If you're doing it 10%, You'll attract a man that you can share 10% of it with, which means you'll have a 90% deficient relationship and you'll be hating your life. If you do it 51%, that's great. If you do 51%, you're going to attract a man that's 51% you can experience joy with, which means he's better than he's worse. At that point, he's already a keeper. Okay? But let's shoot for a B. Thrive as yourself, shoot for 80%. And get 80% of a perfect relationship. We're not going to hit 100%. I'm not even going to try that. Okay? But honestly, if we can just hit 51%, it's good enough. It's keeping us alive. We're drawing. We're, go, we're, move, we're ahead. See, in life, it's about not running a deficit. You know, at 51%, we're no longer running a deficit. At 51%, the energy the relationship takes, the relationship gives a little more back. That's like having a car that, no, that for every 10 gallons of gas you burn, you get 10 and a half gallons for free. That means, that means you never have to buy gas. Wouldn't that be a wonderful car? You would keep that car, right? Sure, you'd rather have a car that for every 10 gallons of gas you burn, you got 20 gallons of gas, right? That would be even better. But really, as long as you get a little more back, you're moving ahead in life. Okay? 51% is good enough in this world of major deficits. Think about the energy, the hope that you've put into your love life. How much energy you put into it and just how much you got back. You know? Think of the single mom that spent 18 years raising a kid alone because of a one night stand. So the energy you got was one great night and you put out 18 years of sleepless nights, trying to make ends meet, raising this little monster who you love without anyone to ever give you a break and help you with it or to comfort you when you were just going crazy from the stress. Wow, that's a fucking deficit, right? Okay, that's the kind of deficit of trouble Jupiter can give to you. It's not the deficit you want. So it doesn't have to be perfect, but you need to live your life at least 51% or more. And then you'll attract a relationship that adds to your life. If you can't attract a relationship that adds to your life if you're not living your life enough. Okay? So, you need to change your habits. Start looking, letting the outside, inside come out. 
as a way to live. Stop looking for outside things to give you a reason to live. There's nothing out there worth living for. You're alive because life wants to live through you. And that's your Jupiter. Okay? Live that life and see what it does on the outside. Because there's something outside waiting for you to live your life. Okay? There is a man out there waiting for you to live your life. He cannot find you if you're not living your life. See, living your life is like setting up this flare into the sky. Fireworks. Saying, here I am, honey. Come and get me. Doing anything else is saying, you know, doing everything for a guy, you know, using your curves to draw a guy in, is basically saying, come and make me miserable. Come and make, draw, make me waste more of my life, more of my energy on you. Those don't work. Okay? All right. You want to live the spark. Jupiter is the spark. You're not in the habit of living the lightning bolts that come into your consciousness. The spark. The spark to do something good. Aha, I want to do this. This will give me excitement. I'm inspired. Live that spark. That's the spark that's telling you this is what your soul wants you to do. On earth. It's bringing the fire of heaven to the, down to earth where you can live it. Okay? And then when you live the spark, share your life. The minis are living the spark. Someone wants to share it with you. Someone really, really does. There's nothing more attractive than Jupiter, okay? You know, it has the most mass. It has the most gravity. It attracts things to it. It's what it does, okay? So, live the spark and then share your life. Don't share your life and think you'll get a spark. It doesn't work that way, okay? All right, I hope this helps everybody. Um, you know, and again, it's just a matter of habit. It's that easy now. Okay? Thank you.